And a warm welcome to everyone on behalf of CIO Leader and the 9.9 .9 Group to today's CIO Gurukul session. Today we'll be looking at deriving value from data, which many organizations are generating, storing, and processing. In some cases, the data is voluminous and frequently changing. In other situations, CIOs are grappling with the variety and variability of data. Organizations have also realized that there is value to be derived from data. And over the years, they have evolved from leveraging data from routine MIS reports to interactive dashboards and business analytics for operational management and business planning. The latest trend, of course, is to apply AI to data to identify new opportunities. But the question is, what is the best way to leverage data and create new models? To answer that is our guest for today, Mr. Vinod Gopinathan, Chief Information Officer at Ashok Leyland Limited. Mr. Gopinathan has more than 28 years of experience in managing IT and automotive business operations. He has a strong interest in applying data and technology to solve business challenges and has spearheaded the development of Ashok Leyland's IT architecture. As the company's chief digital architect, he has been leading large-scale business transformation projects that leverage digital centers of excellence at Ashok Leyland. In today's session, Mr. Gopinathan will be sharing his thoughts on leveraging data for new business models. He'll be taking us through the AI-led journey at Ashok Leyland, where data and AI are extensively leveraged to develop cutting-edge solutions. In the course of his talk, he will cover the importance of data and AI in today's world, business drivers for adopting AI, AI-powered solutions at Ashok Leyland, and key learnings on how to succeed with AI. Before I hand over the stage uh, to Mr. Gopinathan, I would like to remind all delegates attending this session to post your queries in the Q&A box. We'll take them up at the end of the session. So over to you, Mr. Gopinath. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Giridhar. Uh, warm welcome, good afternoon, and warm welcome to all the participants in the session. I know it's a, a working day and taking some time during this afternoon hours is it's actually a busy time. Uh, but I think I, I sincerely thank the people who have joined. Uh, what I would do is in the next, maybe close to around 40 minutes uh, is share my experience. That's the best thing I can do because all of you are experts in the respective areas in your areas and technology experts. But let me share with you what uh, we do at Ashok Leyland. Possibly there can be a synergy or some takeaways from here, uh, which can be leveraged in your organization and vice versa when we do the Q&A session. So let me share my screen. I have a deck to present on uh, our uh, AI journey. So uh, the topic is leveraging data for uh, new business models, uh, leveraging AI. So a brief on the agenda, a quick overview of what's Ashok Leyland, uh, the age of data, the business drivers for AI adoption, the AI use cases at, uh, of AI in Ashok Leyland and the key learnings we had in our journey. So this is our uh, vision to be a glob, the top 10 global CV player. And our technology vision is to enable AL transform into a leader in holistic and sustainable mobility solutions powered by cutting edge uh, technology and digital products. Uh, about Ashok Leyland, uh, we are a 75 year old organization with uh, 4 billion plus revenue with nine manufacturing locations spread across the globe. Uh, largest supplier of the uh, defense logistics vehicle 12th largest manufacturer of trucks globally, fifth uh, largest manufacturer of buses in the world. Something about us and uh, in Ashok Leyland, what has been our uh, digital journey? So uh, I'm talking about close to around 15 years of uh, journey now, more than that, close to around that. So we started our, uh, the, the ERP core ERP systems. We had uh, a homegrown ERP, which we migrated into our uh, product ERP. Somewhere in 2010, we moved. Uh, from there, we started building the core. What we because every uh, every building foundation. So building the uh, the uh, and strengthening the uh, the building is very important when you uh, construct layers on the top, which uh, is effectively using all of these uh, new age uh, digital technologies. Then for us, so we serve a lot of group companies. So we established a shared service. Uh, practice for our group companies, uh, Ashok Leland being the parent company. Then uh, when the world started talking about 
uh, digital, we also sl slowly started into the digital journey with some of the uh, mobile applications and so on. We toyed with the idea of uh, building a digital uh, ecosystem in Ashok Leland. And that, then somewhere in 2017, we created our digital marketplace. Then having uh, said that, you know, uh, having established a digital practice, then we wanted to uh, use this data, what we gather into building uh, differentiated solutions for our customers, leveraging ABCD. ABCD stands for AI, blockchain, conversational platforms, and digital twins. Then we, uh, the next phase was building uh, Agile Ashok Leland, uh, leveraging automation, analytics, and AI. And now every year we come, every two years we come up with a new theme. So now the theme is to build an AI driven organization. So when we talk about uh, AI, the base is always uh, data. And how do we leverage this data for new business models is a theme. So this, everybody knows. So this uh, this uh, information is publicly available. What happens in a minute? Uh, so much of the data is uh, coming out uh, from various systems. Maybe most of these are from the social um, uh, platforms. So much of data and it has that has exploded multi times. So you can see the volume uh, which has been you know incremented from 2010 to 2025. What is the prediction for 2025? With some some you know uh, comparison from 125 billion HD movies to 11.3 trillion HD movies. That's the size of the data. What would be generated close to 2025? So and everybody talks about all the world uh, leaders talk about. Uh, AI and data. And not only the data comes uh, from the uh, places we used to talk about earlier, now data comes from anywhere and everywhere, right? Like including the, the, the glucose monitoring we have on the hand or the smart meters for our electricity, uh, parking lot. These are all the new things which has come in, the weather data, uh, the, uh, the fitness data, shared mobility data, a lot of data other than the enterprise data or the general data, what we know is coming into, and everybody is trying to leverage this data to do a monetization or do a new business model with this. Some statistics of what happens within our organization uh, in a minute, so much of data, is so much of uh, traffic, so, and, and so many emails, uh, chats, meetings, uh, what all transactions happening. And a lot of data is being already stored. ERP data is close to 10 TB. The engineering data is close to 60 TB. All other applications put together. There's a lot of petabytes of data. The cloud storage is close to 1.5 petabyte. And for uh, to add to that, every day, uh, we uh, generate close to around uh, 2 TB of uh, data from our telematics, which is connected around 1.5 lakh vehicles. So there's huge volume of data coming from various uh, sources. Now, what are the what are the business drivers for it? Now, there are two schools of thought on this, but one thing is certain that uh, the business models can definitely shift from what it is today. So, if we see the uh, business model today, it's mostly from the products what we sell and the spare parts and service and a limited number of solutions uh, what uh, we sell. But going forward. We see that the solutions part would gain a substantial uh, share of the pie. So when we talk about solutions, it's all based on uh, data. And when we talk about data, the differentiating factor is AI. So uh, having said that, some of the uh, uh, you know the key advantages would connect come from for, for us. It will come from the connected products the uh, virtual parts source, remote servicing. These are some of the solutions which can come up in the future. They, these are already there, but in a small scale, but possibly going forward, these can come up in a, a larger way. And there are customer uh, specific solutions also. Now this data and AI driven analytics is bridging the gap uh, between the traditional things and the new age uh, business model in a classic, uh, you know, uh, solutions we used to have. Uh, people used to talk about uh, mileage in India. This is very important. Uh, then the vehicle loading span, the tire life, all of those things on the technical side was the uh, pitch 
which used to be given uh, of the, the customer rather used to ask and this was a pitch normally uh, being talked about between the customer and the salesperson. Now, today it has totally changed. People are uh, not willing to invest money on the vehicle. So we have seen this not only in the uh, passenger car where in a lot of uh, players uh, giving it as a service paper use model. I mean, the Gen Z, uh, they wouldn't like to invest most of them, uh, not only on the vehicles, most of the areas like even washing machines uh, are also you know, uh, available for paper use. So when we talk about in our parlance, so people now prefer to have an asset light model. Most of the places for the state governments, we are running on this um, asset light model where it is being paid on paper use. So that's a, that's a solution. Then you need to have a connected, the, the question normally asks all of us when we buy a car or even a two-wheeler, the question is, uh, do, does it have this internet features? Does it, uh, does it have a mobile app? All of the connected digital solutions uh, is, uh, you know, being discussed while we purchase a vehicle. Then the remote uh, facility of remote services. Most of the vehicles now has that facility, especially the two-wheelers and all of them um, have that. Then whether the, the aggregation model where you have applications to get the load aggregated, drivers, and a lot of uh, personalization which is being asked. And how does it connect with the open uh, digital other platforms for connecting this vehicle with the other service providers, maybe some service here taking from a load provider. So, so the conversation has totally shifted uh, from what it was to a new age conversation with everything based on the data. This is for us, uh, this is specifically on the, uh, uh, the commercial vehicles. The demography is uh, changing. And now this is another factor, uh, you know, which, uh, accelerates the usage of data into generating more uh, personalized customer uh, solutions. So this is how it has evolved. Now, when we talk about uh, data-driven business model changes, we see on the left side, what are the business aspects and today how it is and how it will uh, shift tomorrow. For example, the sales and marketing, it's just based on uh, the, vehicle, the, the vehicle sale, what we do. Tomorrow it will shift. Today also it has come up, but the percentage is very less. But going forward, this can shift it into a, a paper kilometer service. The ownership from capital intense to a lightweight. And for example, I'm not going through all of those things. You know, if you uh, say a financing or an insurance model, the traditional models were there where we pay upfront. Now people have come up. The companies have come up on based on how. Uh, how many kilometers is being driven and how it is uh, being driven. Similarly, vehicle service, there are a lot of facilities where uh, the, the service is done remotely by the uh, dealerships and from a fault diagnosis, post failure to early warning, prognostics and self-diagnostics. A lot of features, flashing over there is one of the game changers uh, in today's world. So the technology has changed the way the business model is uh, being operated. Now, classic example, this is uh, the newspaper ad which came where HGFC had launched this program based on uh, paper use. And now I think the other the companies also um, are catching up, advertising a lot of paper use uh, models. Now, a uh, preview of what's happening in Ashok Leland. We have a platform uh, called the Hubble, uh, which Hubble is a telescope, I think all of you would be aware, which is kept place, uh, uh, you know, much above the Earth's surface, 320 kilometers above the Earth's surface, which gives into deep insights into what is uh, happening into the universe. So similarly, we have aptly named as Hubble. So our platform gives uh, deep insights into what's happening in uh, the organization. So we have put it into eight buckets. Uh, what is One is insights based on data, predictions, recommendations, computer vision, video analytics, natural language processing, robotics, and the RPA. So I'll give you some of the examples of uh, uh, some of the projects which has been done in this uh, platform. Uh, on, the, uh, on the insights, if we take uh, today for a commercial vehicle, uh, most of the uh, cost, operating costs come from fuel and uh, uh, tire. So, and uh, fuel today, I know, as you know, is close to 100 rupees. Uh, 
one liter i mean a lot of pilferage which can happen over uh, i mean uh, on a, on a, on a commercial vehicle which has got 500 liter can capacity so so the the concern from the the owners was how do we identify whether there is a uh, pure pilferage so uh, using uh, data which comes uh, from the fuel tank level and based on the the pattern we were able to uh, put ai and uh, understand where the pilferage has been happened all these red dots you see on the screen are the areas the the algorithm has uh, pointed out as pilferage we are able to accurately point out on these cases and help the customers identify uh, the vehicle pilferage. So these are some of the insights uh, which is generated out of the data using AI. Similarly, on uh, the the predictions uh, using algorithms, we are able to uh, predict uh, from our pipeline, from our field staff, the our extended arm, the dealerships also have the sales team. From all these processes, what we have based on the pipeline, we are able to predict what would be the sale and that prediction with accuracy goes into uh, the production planning. So uh, in uh, nutshell, the data uh, from the field uh, using algorithms is also used for our uh, production planning. And this has helped a lot. The, the benefits are, you know, accuracy in um, the, the retail estimates and also the stock uh, available at both the, uh, the OEM end as well as the dealer end has come down, we are able to optimize it because of the data generated using this. Some of the recommendations, uh, we say this on the CU, uh, CIPR, the industry recommender engines, where uh, we have used, there are multiple of use cases in this screen, what you see, but I was just explaining one of the things. For a, you know, our business operates based on a dealership model. So, from uh, from our company, it goes to the distributor, to the retailer, to uh, the the end user who can be a mechanic or a customer directly. So based on the the the, the touch point and the the parts being sold at the nearby location, and based on the seasonality and all of those algorithms which uh, we can use from the data, uh, we have uh, tried to prescribe what parts would be needed at that store so that one is we don't want to have a stockout situation and to ensure that the retailer's business also is growing so uh, after introducing this this has been now running for close to more than a year uh, now constantly we are able to generate almost additional two crores of revenue uh, using this industry recommender not only that we are also able to give uh scheme recommenders like most of the e-commerce desks so we also used to we also use algorithms to see uh what schemes to be recommended at what period at which specific to which region so there are a lot of data which uh, analytics which goes into this for improving the business the another thing is on uh, the computer vision i mean sorry it's wrongly put as robotics it is computer vision wherein we have uh, uh, put in uh, computer vision at various points uh, unmanned quality points, and this is ensuring the quality check. I'll just play a video where it, uh, one of the use cases. So this is a typical uh, sealant application. Uh, this is on one of the engine, uh, parts which is fitted on the engine, and the red color that, like what you see as a toothpaste, is a sealant. Now uh, the problem is that. Uh, you know, while this is all using the robotic arm, it is being dispensed. There are some scenarios, the zoomed one, the thing which you see on the center, there can be breakages in between which can really lead to uh, engine oil leak. So possibly there is a huge uh, a rework which has happened. And unfortunately, if it gets into the vehicle again, it, there is a lot of work to be done on this. So we have uh, put in uh, computer vision uh, techniques and this this is uh, you know caught right there so that you know immediately before fitment the action is uh, being taken so I'll just uh, show you a, um, a full video of how it works.
so the the computer vision checks whether the component is okay and we have also internally locked it so that if it is not okay it doesn't move to the uh, next session and a manual intervention is needed to rectify the defect and then uh, go to the next stage so this was some of the things on the um, again on the computer vision which we use during the covid times i'm not getting into the, the, the social distancing mass temperature and all of those now coming to nlp uh, uh, this is one of the use cases on uh, the suppliers. We have given a chatbot uh, to the suppliers because a lot of queries come from suppliers on related to the, the mostly it is related to the payment, the purchase, they will give the reference of purchase order, whatever it may be, and then the GRNs and then uh, when, the, when they can expect the payment. So a lot of time was uh, spent on this. So we gave a, a very simple bot, uh, which is called as a supplier buddy. And this works on natural language process. So you can just speak to it. I mean, not needed to. There is a guided navigation also, but at the same time, there is a voice enabled thing uh, where they can talk uh, and then find out um, about their, you know, uh, whatever it may be their payments or um, what information they normally need from Ashok Leland. Similarly, this has been uh, given for our uh, internal staff also. It's called Me Who May I Help You where they can uh, get information about sales service policies and all of uh, those information this is all basically the difference is that is all nlp driven uh, chatbots robotics this is uh, mostly available in most of the manufacturing units now this is on uh, uh, hyper automation where is this uh, uh, what we have uh, named as alpha this is a robotic process automation wherein uh, uh, we have eliminated the paper and also uh, compressed the cycle time in uh, uh, in processing the payment for the uh, the supplier so we get uh, close to around uh, 10000 invoices a day at our centralized uh, payable facility in chennai so normally the the vendors take the invoice they courier it and it is received at the unit and uh, uh, finance validations, three-way matching in the ERP system, and then the payment is being processed. Uh, in case of, you know, there can be delay in courier. If there is an error, it has to be sent back. A lot of delays uh, used to happen at various stages. So we, what we have done is, first is uh, we have eliminated this paper. So everything is digital invoice, uh, uh, digitally signed also. And then it is, we have given a designated email ID wherein all the, uh, the vendor send us uh, uh, that PDF invoice to the uh, email ID. The bot then take the care of the rest. So the bot logs into the email, uh, downloads the uh, invoice, it scans the invoice, then it posts the data, it compares the data with SAP and then the payment processing is happened. There can be one percentage of uh, an exception for some reason, uh, which may not be an IT related uh, it can be a, other reasons also. So the entire thing has been automated. There's a small video on how the, it works. Uh, There are close to around 1,000 vendors, and uh, instead of standardizing that, which would be difficult for them because they would be dealing with multiple OEMs, we uh, we have accepted uh, any format of their invoice, and we train the bot the first time. And next time onwards, the bot takes care. So for each of the vendors, the first invoice is being uh, trained by the bot. Even if it is not trained, it gets into the quarantine bucket. Somebody will monitor that and then train it. The next time onwards the bot will uh, take it. So we have made it simple for at both ends. And this has helped us uh, not only on the uh, cycle time reduction for the vendor payments, but it has also uh, considerably reduced our invoice processing costs because of this automation.
uh, we spoke about a lot of data coming from our vehicles, uh, close to two terabytes of uh, data per day. And how do we use that? Uh, we use, uh, uh, we have the mileage coming out of our uh, vehicle is used, but we also, uh, without using uh, additional sensors, which adds the cost based on the data patterns uh, of the, the parameters coming out of the engine and all, we calculate using algorithms. We also predict what is the load and, and correlate the mileage with that. So it makes more sense to say this mileage with this load. And uh, most of the uh, vehicle data is uh, errors which comes in the issues are all automatically transmitted to the uh, dealer management system in the job card. So that by the time the uh, vehicle comes into the workshop, uh, before even the driver tells what's the complaint, all the uh, most of the errors, because a lot of issues in the vehicle, almost all these are printed onto the job card. It also gives a, a history of that particular error. Suppose there was an overheating, how many kilometers it has been driven with overheating, what is a peak temperature it has run. All of this information comes readily uh, from the uh, 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 you know the the platform into the uh, the dealer management system for the electric vehicles uh, predicting the charge how much more kilometers it can run using the charge this is one halt analytics where is the vehicle halting more because you know near to the daba and all of those things using data we see to uh, to see where to operate a, a, a in case we need to op open a, a parts store a retail parts store or we need to open a workshop, service workshop, where are the ideal points to open so that it's it's both viable for the dealership as well as useful for the customer. This is some data which uh, analytics which we uh, do using the vehicle data. A lot of vehicle diagnosis, network adequacy, where to, uh, based on the routes, uh, where the uh, vehicles are flying, which is the nearest outlet, how far it is, uh, um, and how do we ensure that, you know, we have a touch point in uh, almost at least every 50 kilometers or 75 kilometer policy. So this is some of the areas which we leverage uh, this uh, data for. Now, when we uh, see the uh, maturity, uh, there are five levels in uh, um, AI maturity. So starting from awareness to active to operational to systematic to transformational. So we will say that we are somewhere in the range Four. So we are now uh, um, systematic in AI with AI-enabled solutions, RPAs, chatbots, image recognition, and all. The 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 idea is to the vision is to go uh, to a transformational stage, maybe in the near future, with all AI-led solution solutions, ML, digital twins, IoT, and a lot of uh, industry 4.0, which we have started our journey uh, now. So while we talk about AI, there are a lot of uh, algorithms uh, which are available readily, but some of the algorithms which we use close to around 400, 260 algorithms we use, some of them are uh, listed over right here. So in this journey, it has been a wonderful journey for us. So uh, uh, what, what are the key learnings for us? So when we talk, about AI journey, there are multiple elements to it. One is definitely a strategy, a well-defined uh, strategy for AI. And it has to be every every project that has to be linked, it has to be linked to a, a business value. I always talk about what is a KPI, how do we measure, how do we measure the baseline, and then how do we measure the increment? Otherwise, uh, it will just uh, become an experiment. But nothing wrong with that, but at least uh, the, the investment which ha it goes into this has to be uh, useful. The second is adoption. As I mentioned, the KPIs has to, if, if this has to be, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the adoption is a challenge in most of the organizations and many projects. So uh, sponsorship from the leadership and uh, constant push is sometimes needed uh, to reach a velocity where it can automatically take off. The next is uh, data, all this information, what we process, the base should be clean data. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the results also would be, uh, you know, not so great. Uh, 
the the you know garbage in garbage out so policies for ensuring a clear data strategy to support ai is ultimately uh, the uh, the major element in this talent and leadership a lot of uh, i'll come from the other one models tools and technology um, uh, what are the uh, new techniques available what are the new models available um, and how do we optimize the performance of the um, tools what we have is constantly which has to be done is another area which has to be focused on uh, you know uh, on the ways of working design thinking in most of the areas definitely can yield in a better result last but not the least getting a good talent pool and leadership sponsorship is a key element to the uh, success of an ai driven uh, organization so this is uh, what i had to uh, share so uh, over to you girian um Thank you, Mr. Gopinathan. I think that was a wonderful overview of how you're using AI to propel the business and for highlighting some of the challenges in the journey. It's quite encouraging to note the successes that you and your team have had with this new technology. It does provide us with a lot of useful and valuable insights. So we'd really appreciate if you can address a few questions posed by the delegates who are attending this session. So the first question is from Naresh Yadav. You know, which version of SAP do you use and which bot solution have you used to automate the invoice processing? Yeah, so uh, some of these uh, questions can uh, be uh, dealt offline also, but whatever is uh, answerable through this uh, media, I will definitely answer. So uh, we are on uh, SOH. Uh, we haven't uh, moved to S4. There is a there is a way planned for uh, S4, but currently we are on SOH. On the bot, uh, I think we will catch off late. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Baswalinga. Uh, he says, thank you for the great session. I'm an ex-employee of Ashok Leland, and I could see the drastic digital transformation made in AI in Ashok Leland now. How do you balance between data retention, data analytics, and personal data protection and AI? You mentioned that you have a lot of data and you're continuing to collect a lot of data every day. Okay, so uh, I think it's a big question. So on the data retention as such, see, uh, frankly, we, uh, we uh, have archived some of the data, but uh, on the enterprise side at all, uh, our data is still available in the warm uh, itself, in the hot area itself, we haven't archived much. Possibly we will have an archival on the journey to the S4. The other areas uh, on the DPDP, which we are currently working, we are uh, on the uh, process of evaluating various tools to segregate the data. See, norm, when we talk about this data, and uh, I mean, uh, other than the data privacy and all of those things, other things are governed by the, uh, the data governance mechanisms, the tools and all what uh, we have as part of various tools which we use. On the DPDP specifically, now we are evaluating processes to add tools to ensure that we are compliant with the uh, DPDP um, law. See, first, question, first thing is, we are, always we ask that question, is that data really required for us? And what are we going to do with this data? This is the first question. Uh, I mean, I think all of us would be asking before even starting uh, to collect that information. So the, we do ask that question. And second is what uh, frequency we need to keep the data. Some of the loss for us um, uh, warrants eight years of uh, data retention. So definitely we'll have to keep it for eight years. Beyond that, what we do. So there are policies and governance around that. The DPDP is an additional thing which we are currently working on. Thank you. Uh, another question is, what are the challenges faced by Ashok Leland in terms of cloud and AI ML? Cloud and? AIML. Okay, so two separate questions. So for us, uh, I think it is almost 50-50. We have our own data centers um, and we have uh, uh, workloads on the cloud. Uh, when I say 50-50, uh, the percentage of in terms of compute and storage would be 
fifty uh, percentage would be on the cloud, fifty percent. It's a it's a balanced environment over here. So the question of when you select cloud, there are multiple strategies. What strategy we adopted is that you know we had data centers and wherever uh, we found out that that is economical to op operate uh, on prem, we did so. But there are when we come to uh, the new age technologies uh, where instead of building an application. Uh, we subscribe to services uh, which are given by the cloud service providers, which are way ahead. Uh, I mean, they, they keep on innovating. So when the, the past services, we use the cloud and wherever we have a huge storage, which has to be uh, scaled up and the compute have to be scaled uh, uh, periodically or scaled up or down. There, there, there we use the cloud. So we this is the strategy we adopt uh, as of uh, today uh, possibly as we go there are different schools of thought people talking about moving to cloud the other side other, other side people moving back from cloud to um, the data centers um, even own data centers so polos because of various uh, reasons uh, one major reason being the cost uh, so this is uh, on my take on the cloud or at, for Ashok Leyland and uh, on the the second portion on the AIML, uh, we uh, the the biggest advantage is we have a team uh, in within IT. The the we have a separate vertical uh, digital within the uh, uh, the IT team, which uh, addresses uh, all the business related the digital solutions. Uh, the the uh, good portion is that most of the people are uh, experienced in the business, have been in the organization for some time and then changed the uh, verticals from the business to the, um, the, the, uh, the, the digital space. Most of them have been um, trained also on that area from reputed institutes. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, I should not say it is an easy walk. Uh, there are a lot of challenges with respect to resources, um, constant upgrade understanding of that it, uh, the data data related uh, challenges there are a lot of uh, very interesting journey so possibly we can catch and have an offline discussion also on that uh, thank you so we know one more question is that you mentioned during your presentation that you are using a large number of ai ml algorithms now how much of these are open source and how much of these are uh, third-party solutions that you are using and what's been done in-house? So, see, algorithms, uh, I should say almost all are open source algorithms. Algorithms today, there is no death of getting an algorithm. Uh, there are tens of thousands of algorithms which are available in open source world itself. So, most of the algorithms we use are uh, open source. There are custom-based rules possibly written on top of uh, these algorithms based on uh, use case, uh, what we do. The trick is which algorithm would give the best result for the that scenario is the trick, uh, the, you know, the, the, the trick of the game. So that is a tricky situation which comes based off the experienced people that, and constant uh, scaling on that. So, so do you have any advice for people who are going to embark on this journey? I mean, as you have yourself mentioned, you know, there is a vast menu of choices. So how to identify the appropriate ones? Uh, identify the, what is that? I mean, I mean uh, given that you yourself said, you know, there are so many uh, choices that you have in terms of algorithms, in terms of platforms, in terms of solutions. So what is the advice you would give for someone who's just starting out on this journey? How should they choose? Hmm. So uh, uh, for the people, I mean, there can be different levels. So even at, at a level when I say for we still uh, run algorithms, the selection of algorithms is uh, mostly by uh, experience and skill. Uh, you know, there has been there, there should be a lot of research to understand what algorithm. There is, there is a lot of algorithms which come out regularly, so uh, uh, which can be a betterment to the uh, the previous version. So 
what algorithm has to be used for which scenario is a question of uh, skill and experience. Now, having said that, how do we uh, start? Start simple uh, with uh, some small, um, you know, data set analysis, which can be a potential uh, use case within the organization on a uh, on-prem model. Uh, you possibly we need to have some uh, small-scale GPU machines to start with on-prem, experimenting with your data scientists, and then possibly deploy, uh, toy with the idea if it works, then move the production at large scale into, if you have a data center, put it in the data center. If you don't have, deploy that on the cloud. So some of our applications, what we do is we uh, we develop it on-prem and deploy it on the cloud when it comes to uh, masses. For example, if you take this uh, fuel pilferage uh, case, which I mentioned here, a lot of data is coming out from all these vehicles and the, the fuel level. So you can imagine the volume of uh, data which comes out from each of these vehicles. So the model is trained on-prem and uh, we do experiments. And then for running a algorithm for this volume of vehicle, 1.5 lakh vehicles, uh, that's a humongous task. That requires a lot of uh, compute. So we do those on the, uh, on the cloud. So it depends on the use case. So my recommendation or suggestion would be for the people, I think most of them would be in at least uh, two or three, most of the people would have come to that stage. I'm not able to see the audience over here, but I'm saying, so if you're not there, the idea is to start simple with uh, uh, on-prem uh, solution. And then uh, if you can run it on-prem itself, that would be good. If you can't, then run it on the scale. There are a lot of uh, algorithms available and ready packaged on the cloud also. There can be a cost to that. This is one area which uh, people have to be conscious of when we subscribe to these services on the cloud. For example, uh, uh, computer vision, what we have done, I showed you, is this is an algorithm which runs on the edge. Uh, when you see the camera, it, it, there, is a, there is a small CPU behind that camera. So the, the entire algorithm runs on the edge. At the same time, there are services available with the major uh, hyperscalers readily available on this um, uh, this. Algorithm, so it's possible even to uh, subscribe to the services, but the question of cost would be a differentiator in this. So, uh, so the cost versus effectiveness is a, a advice which I would like to give. Thank you. So uh, we don't have any more questions from the audience. So I would like to thank you, Mr. Gopinathan, for sharing your valuable expertise and knowledge. I'm sure everyone who has attended this session would have found your viewpoints very useful and helpful. It was a really a wonderful session, very interesting things that you have shown us. And I'm sure, you know, I encourage people to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about this. I know you are very passionate about, you know, using data to, uh, you know, leverage new business models. And my thanks also to all the delegates who attended this session who posted questions. I hope you found this webinar interesting and informative. But before you log out from the session, please take a few minutes to send in your feedback and comments by clicking on the link that has been posted in the chat box. Uh, this Your feedback will help us organize more such interactions with industry experts. So thank you once again. Uh, and we look forward to hosting you all at another session of CIO Gurukul. And meanwhile, it's goodbye from CIO Leader. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.